Okay, today we're going to talk about improvement and change. What I do is I go around the country teaching project teams how to make improvements. But despite there being many, many benefits to those improvement projects, not everybody in the organisation is willing to change. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the emotional side of change and how people react to change. The key message is people don't resist change, they resist being changed. And if you involve them in the project, explain what you're doing, why you're doing it, you'll have much greater chance of success. The change model that I like best and is most widely used was developed by a lady called Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. She was working with terminally ill cancer patients and she realised that they went through five stages or phases of change. Now we're going to be talking about an organisational setup, a work environment, but those five stages are still very, very valid. So the first of those stages is shock and denial. I can't believe it. You have got to be kidding. They're going to do what? The second stage is a flood of emotions and that's typically anger. I am seething. They can't be going to do this. Makes my blood boil. Okay? Very, very normal reaction. Then we get into a stage called bargaining and this is because all change produces fear, anxiety about what's going to happen. In other words, what's going to happen for, for me? Is my job going to change? Am I still going to be here? And people start bargaining. Can we put it off? Can we do something different? Can I get involved in this way? It's a normal phase of change. We then get into depression. Well, it's not really depression at the outset. It's grief because all change induces loss. People lose the way that they used to do things, even if that was very wasteful and bureaucratic and, and, and really just not pleasant to be involved in, they're losing something. And if people lose, you've got to give them time to grieve. That's just normal part of it. And then finally, we get into acceptance. But there's two kinds. There's intellectual acceptance, which sounds a bit like, well, okay, you're going to do it anyway. There's nothing I can do about it. On you go. I retire in 35 years. It doesn't matter anyway. Okay? That's intellectual acceptance. But emotional acceptance is when people say, actually, I, I'm going to get involved in this because I can see that this is the way the organisation is going to go and I have to be in part of that. Now, an easy way to remember these five phases is by the acronym DABDA. Okay? Denial, first of all, anger, bargaining, depression and acceptance. Now, these five phases are normal and necessary. People have got to go through them. And for a significant event, something that forces you to change, you have no option, it can take up to 18 months to get through it. Okay? Now, if somebody changes your job title, it takes you 18 months to get over it, that's, that's a bit too long. Okay? But if you get a complete new reorganisation, or um, you lose some staff, or your job changes, it can take that long to get through these five stages of change. Now, you don't have to go through all of them in order. You can go from one stage to another stage very quickly. Okay? You might have somebody say, well, I, th I thought you accepted that. You said that you were going to get on board with it, but, but you, you just look so angry now. You said, yeah, I didn't realise how, how angry this was, because that's the way they made them feel. Okay? It's normal and necessary. Now, the key thing is not to get stuck in any of the stages. You've got to go through the stages. It's a natural progression. It's part of the emotional makeup of being human. You've got to move through the stages. So where do people get stuck? Well, they tend to get stuck in anger or depression. Okay? Anger is they get really mad at something or someone and stay mad. They can be mad at people that left the organisation years ago and they're still angry about what they did. You've got to move on. You can't live your life like that. And the really sad ones are the ones that get depressed. Grief turns into clinical depression. And when they say, I don't care, really, that's what they mean. They don't care. You've got to think of yourself as, as a pioneer in, the, in this world, not a victim. Stay out of the victim zone. Don't get into this depression. And you can help people involved in change by keeping them moving through these stages of change. So what will we do to help people? with change. 
first thing is tell them what you're doing and why. Okay? People need to know. All, in times of change, all perceptions are distorted. So you've got to give them more information. Tell them what's going on. Tell them again. Tell them again. Give them an opportunity to get involved. If you hold information from people, you're treating them like children. And you sh really shouldn't be surprised when they start to act like children as well. Okay? So give them lots of information about what's, what's actually going on. Allow them to have their say. Look for their suggestions, their input. Get them involved in the project. And keep things as the same as long as possible. So don't change everything at once. Give people a chance to get used to it. So keep everything the same as long as possible, as long as it doesn't get in the way of change. That's, that's really important. People need a sense of the familiar okay, before they move on. And they move on slower, some, some slower than others. Introduce a bit of fun. Okay? We all tend to get too serious about these things. A bit of light-hearted fun and, and poking fun at the change itself can help people actually relax and not get stuck in either anger or, or depression. And then finally, get them involved. Ask their opinion. Use them to really influence the change and actually make it better. Okay? If you're within a project team that's, that's implementing a, a change, you can see the benefits. So get other people involved so that they can see it and they actually want to get involved. So these five phases are basically feelings. And feelings are OK. okay? All behavior isn't OK. So if, if people are behaving inappropriately, then you may have to correct that. But these feelings, you've got to let people feel that way. Particularly anger. There's got to be steam valves to let people to let their anger off. Because all low morale is unresolved anger. There are no exceptions. Okay? It's because people have got stuck in one of those stages of change. So I want to just finish off with a, a, a little story, a fable, as you would. Okay? And this is a story about two monks that lived many, many centuries ago. And these two monks were from a particular order. Okay? And that order was not allowed any contact with women. Okay? Even more than that, they weren't even allowed to speak to women. And these two guys were on a quest, a journey. And as they came down out of the foothills onto the, the valley floor, they could see that the storm that they'd in, endured the night before had made the river break its banks. And the, the bridge that they were hoping to cross had been washed away. Okay. On this side of the river stood a woman, very smartly dressed, with a hat and an umbrella and a very long flowing dress. And she was standing there wondering how she was going to get across the river. Okay. Without pausing, the older monk gently picked the woman up and waded through the river. Water got to about waist high, but he managed to make sure that the dress didn't trail in the water the woman got to the, the other side safely. She thanked him profusely, and she went on her way. At which point, the younger monk came charging over the river, shouting and screaming at the older monk, I cannot believe what you've just done. That's against all of our rules, all of our principles of our order. At which point, the older monk turned and walked and continued on the path. And the younger monk started shouting at him and followed him. And this went on for an hour. He was going on about how this was terrible and how, how on earth could he do that? What was he thinking? Till eventually they got to a small clearing. And as they entered the clearing, the older monk turned and faced the younger one. And he simply said, I put my burden down an hour ago. You are still carrying yours. So when we think of change, what kind of monk are you? Are you one that's able to adapt to the situation and actually move on and move through these stages of change? Or are you the younger monk that's determined to stick with the old ways, even if they are not the best for the situation at the moment? So when you're in an, an improvement project, think about those five stages of change. The, my favorite and the one that I teach is practical process improvement. It's based on three principles, logical simplicity, practical methods and tools, and involve everybody. And that last one, if you think about that, involve everybody in the change, you will have a much greater chance of success. 